part, really, of a, of a small writing project that Hilary and I are developing um, that's looking at, at Leicester's official designation in the 1990s uh, as an environment city, um, uh, which was a, a new um, post-industrial identity for the city. Uh, and, and, and we're focusing, um, particularly in this paper, uh, on, a, uh, on, the, on the flagship uh, scheme uh, of, of the project, which was uh, the Eco House, uh, and then um, uh, Leicester's transition to, to another identity, um, that of a, of a historic city, uh, and how these shifts have been played out in the city uh, and its surroundings. Um, now, now the, uh, the origins of, 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 of this paper lie in Hilary and I having lived and, and worked uh, in Leicester at different times uh, for, for, um, uh, for the city. Uh, Hilary worked in, in public arts engagement in Leicester in, in the 1980s and early 1990s, uh, and I've been working uh, at the University of Leicester uh, first as a PhD student and, 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 and then a research development uh, job for, for, for the last um, six years. Um, and at, at, at both of those times, in the 1990s and, and the 2010s, um, Leicester's been uh, grappling really with, uh, with a changing identity. Um, so uh, just, to, just to situate uh, where we are, uh, Leicester's in the, uh, in the East Midlands uh, uh, of England, um, and uh, the, the key site uh, that, 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 that we'll be discussing in this paper, uh, the Eco House, you can see there in the, uh, the, the bottom right-hand map, um, uh, that's situated two miles away from, from, from the centre of Leicester, uh, on the edge of Western Park, which is Leicester's largest municipal park, uh, which opened in, in 1899. Um, now, uh, Leicester, um, uh, formerly a, a very major industrial city, and, and to an extent it still is, um, uh, but, 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 but quite declined really uh, in, in terms of uh, textiles, manufacturing, and light engineering. In the 1970s and 1990s, uh, so 1970s through to the 1990s, saw a decline of, of industry in Leicester um, and, and its emergence uh, really as a post-industrial uh, city. Um, but what did this mean for the city and its natural and, and built environment? Well, the, the Environment um, Cities project uh, in the early 1990s had the aim of, uh, of championing the role that, that partnerships could play uh, in, in delivering sustainable development uh, for towns and cities. And it was a UK-wide project that was uh, developed and launched uh, by the Civic Trust, by Friends of the Earth, uh, and the, uh, the Regional Wildlife Trusts. And the aim of this project was to designate four UK cities as environment cities, which would then develop as models of good practice. Uh, committing to improving the urban environment, uh, working to create and enhance open space in cities and make efforts to foster urban wildlife. Uh, well, in 1990, uh, Leicester was designated as the first environment city and was uh, soon followed by uh, Peterborough, Middlesbrough uh, and Leeds. And it's interesting to note that uh, Middlesbrough and Leeds, um, um, particularly those, those two cities, uh, were, were, were were also uh, going through a period of, of quite substantial uh, industrial decline. And perhaps we can see this, uh, the, the environment um, uh, city programme as, as part of an overall reimagining uh, of, of post-industrial cities. Um, well, um, Leicester's project was, was managed by uh, a charity, uh, Environment City Trust, and a, a, a city board uh, was put together that was chaired by the uh, then Vice-Chancellor of, of, of De Montfort University, uh, the other university uh, in the city, uh, and representatives from uh, city and county councils, uh, the business community and local community groups. So it's quite a sort of a, uh, uh, sort of a top-down, high-level uh, organisation uh, of, of the project. Uh, and the project received funding from those city and county councils, uh, as well as the Worldwide Fund for Nature, uh, which paid for uh, research uh, and project development posts. And this, uh, this brochure uh, was published setting out the aims of the Environment City project uh, for Leicester. Uh, and um, projects were uh, developed and delivered through eight 
specialist working groups, uh, each of these comprising uh, decision makers, uh, academics, um, business and uh, special interest groups. Uh, and these groups covered um, great, um, energy, transport, uh, waste and pollution, food and agriculture, uh, economy and work, the built environment, the natural environment, uh, and, the, uh, and the social environment, the, 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 the sort of intangible uh, environment uh, of the city. And um, much of these uh, uh, sort of projects and, and, and interests have since been really absorbed into, into the everyday work of the city uh, and county councils. And the project saw uh, a greening of the city, and there was an element of, of bolting these initiatives onto Leicester's existing green uh, open spaces. Um, there are many parks in, in Leicester, really a legacy of, of it being um, an industrial powerhouse in, in, in the uh, Victorian and Edwardian periods, and being the sort of green lungs of, uh, of an industrial city. And the, um, the, the, the physical manifestation of the work that was carried out by these groups uh, resulted in, in some new initiatives, some not very long-lasting, but some uh, con continuing into, into the present. Uh, so some, some of these um, include uh, these road signs that you, you can see uh, top left. Uh, these, these were positioned uh, on the main arterial routes into the city, uh, so they, they, they were therefore... Uh, for commuters as, as well as visitors to the, uh, to the, to the city to see. Um, there was also research undertaken into uh, policy and, 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 and strategy at a sort of quite high level. Um, the, the ARC Environment uh, Centre was, was, was opened uh, in the St Martin's Square shopping centre, which is quite a new shopping centre. So, so uh, the ARC was, was a, uh, an exhibition space with a, uh, with a cafe, uh, and a cyber cafe, uh, Leicester's first, that um, opened in August 1995. So you can see the photo there from the grand opening um, that was published in, in, the, in the Leicester Mercury uh, in 1995. Um, fantastic quotes uh, at the time that, that was published. The internet is a massive communications network which links together computers from all over the world and can be used or served by complete beginners or more experienced people. Um, so, so that that that, that was uh, that was really useful for uh, um, uh, for uh, residents of Leicester, um, and there was also uh, a city centre bike park at, at, at the town hall, and that's uh, that's still operating uh, more than twenty years later. Um, the the scheme also saw uh, some element of uh, of celebrity endorsement. I don't know if you can uh, see some of uh, some of those uh, quotes there from. Uh, such uh, luminaries as, as Stephen Fry and Philip Schofield and Phil Collins uh, and, and Paul Eddington, who played uh, Jerry Ledbetter in The Good Life, uh, who's the, the, the next door neighbour, uh, I think, trying to, trying to claim um, uh, the good life for, uh, for having um, spurred uh, environmental interests uh, in, in Britain. Um, but, um, but, but the, 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 the sort of real um, sort of cornerstone uh, of the Environment City programme uh, was the Eco House. Um, and uh, as I said earlier, this was um, uh, located two miles from, from the city centre, so, so it was um, in, uh, in Western Park, this very large uh, municipal park. And it was the conversion of an existing park keeper's cottage uh, that had been built in, in the 1950s. Um, and it opened in September uh, 1990, uh, as Leicester was formally designated uh, as Environment City. And the building was, uh, was con uh, converted to uh, have uh, this conservatory on, on its south-facing wall uh, and thermostatically controlled vents transferred heat from the conservatory uh, to other parts of the building. And there were also solar panels to, to heat water uh, and a wind turbine for, for lighting uh, and an underground cool produce store uh, in the gardens. Uh, and, and it was a means of demonstrating uh, technologies and, and best practice uh, for sustainable living and, and was open to, uh, open to the public. Um, in the first few years of its, of its opening, it had about 100,000 visitors, so something in the order of uh, 20,000 visitors a year. 
Uh, this is um, another emission from, from the Leicester Mercury, from, from their archives. Um, this is a, a natural wool ca carpet being, being fitted in the Eco House uh, in, in 1990 before it was opened. Uh, apparently, according to, to the Leicester Mercury, wool acting as a natural dehumidifier and helping to absorb and neutralise static electricity and commonplace air pollutants, <coughs> such as sulphur dioxide. I don't know... <laughs> I, I don't know <laughs> whether, whether that's actually true. But, um, um, but there, were, there were other innovations uh, at the Eco House as well. So, so, so here's some of them. Uh, from, from left to right, there was a, a lagged heat pump that translated warmth from, from grey water, grey waste uh, water, uh, to help heat the, the house uh, hot water supply. Uh, there was a, a 50 watt uh, wind turbine mounted on, on the roof of the house um, that could be used to charge a, a 12 volt electric car battery or, or a television set. Um, there was a, I've not come across this before, a, a Tron wall, T R O N B E, um, where uh, the house bricks were painted black and then enclosed in a window to trap heat. Uh, which uh, would then be released at, at, at night through, through vents in the wall. Uh, and then on the right-hand side, uh, a heat-trapping oriel window, so like a double-glazed window, but with about that much space uh, between two panels, uh, again to, to, to trap heat and then release that uh, into the house. Um, and um, there's a, a very diverse range of, uh, of, of, of visitors to... Uh, to the Eco House, something that was very much promoted uh, by the Eco House and, and, and the charity that runs it. You might know that, that Leicester's uh, population is, is, is a particularly diverse one. Um, everyone is, a, is an ethnic minority in Leicester. Um, more than, than 50% of, of Leicester's population are from uh, black and Asian minority ethnic communities. Uh, and this was embraced by the Eco House, uh, employing uh, translation staff and undertaking community outreach activities uh, to promote uh, energy conservation, um, acting against pollution, uh, and, and promoting uh, recycling. Um, and um, there was further expansion uh, and, and refurbishment of, of the Eco House in, in 2000. Um, <coughs> see, perhaps uh, this extension here is built on. This part here is the original house, and that's where that. Um, a conservatory was originally, uh, but all of this is built on this range at the back as well, and this uh, this brick range here where the conservatory had been. So it was a substantial uh, remodelling of the house, introducing more uh, new, uh, latest technologies into this. So it was really a uh, a show home um, for people to come and see uh, how uh, new uh, technologies could work and how they could incorporate them into their own homes. Um, there was a cafe that uh, served food that, that had been grown on, on the site. It was a um, uh, garden here of nearly uh, three acres, so uh, it was quite, quite substantial, really. Um, rainwater harvesting was, was, was introduced and, and, and composting toilets as well. Uh, and in uh, 2001, at, at the height of Big Brother's uh, popularity, uh, the Eco House held a, a, a competition to put someone to live in the house. Um, so you see, uh, the news report that they are archived on, on the BBC News website. Um, but and further, further retrofits were, were planned for 2010 and 2011 um, to again incorporate the latest technologies. Um, but, but that didn't seem to happen. And in, instead, the Eco House sort of fell away and had been falling away during, during the 2000s, really, in terms of its its visitor numbers. From that peak of, sort of 20,000 a year in 2010, 2011, there were only about 4,000 a year. And we can perhaps think about, about why that might happen as uh, the technologies that, 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 that were introduced to this house in, in 1990 were becoming more mainstream, as were um, other activities that, that the charity um, who ran this engagement, such as um, um, recycling aluminium cans and collecting uh, waste paper from businesses for recycling as activities like that became more mainstream um, and, and, and were delivered by, by, by other organisations, uh, not least the, uh, the city and county councils. Um, we can think about perhaps how something as, as specialised as, as, as this 
became mainstream and, and, and then, then wasn't really needed um, anymore. So um, the, the Eco House closed in, in 2013 due to uh, the lack of visitors. It's now boarded up, uh, gardens left untended, uh, in quite a sort of sorry state, really. Um, and as I said, there, there, there was this sort of overall decline of, uh, of the Environment City project, um, perhaps down to its, down to its success. Um, and uh, in fact, our, Hillary and mine sort of idea for, the, for this, uh, for this sort of small project really sort of stemmed from coming across this, uh, this article um, at, at, at the beginning of the year. Those um, road signs situated on, on the, the sort of main arterial routes into the city uh, being cleared away as, as part of the legible Leicester project to, to, to remove street clutter and superfluous street signage to sort of clean up uh, sort of unwanted, unnoticed uh, parts of, 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 of the city's signage. Um, and and it's around the, around the same time, um, there's, there's something of a, of a, of a, of a shift at, at sort of high level in terms of branding and, and marketing uh, of Leicester. Um, the, the environment city signs went away, but, but their spaces weren't left vacant for very long, actually. Uh, and you can see on the, on the right-hand side here, uh, Leicester's uh, elected mayor, Sir Peter Salisbury, uh, with uh, one of the new signs that, that were erected uh, around the edge of the city, uh, celebrating Leicester instead, uh, not, not as an environmental city or as a multicultural city, but as an historic city, uh, a, a medieval city. Um, and, 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 and this particular uh, narrative for, for, for the city is really... Uh, come in after the discovery of, of the remains of Richard III in, in August 2012 uh, and the reinterment of those remains in the city in March 2015. And there's also been a much wider programme of, of heritage-led regeneration in, in, in the city, uh, with heritage lottery funding for restoration of buildings uh, in the Greyfriars area of the city near the cathedral, um, and business-led regeneration of, of older buildings across the city in general, really. So these new signs feature, feature Richard III uh, and the cathedral, uh, the Victorian town hall and, and clock tower, which is this uh, right in the centre of, 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 of the shopping district um, uh, of Leicester and, it, and is a sort of a Gothic revival, great grand clock tower. And it's this big meeting point uh, for, for, uh, for people coming to Leicester. Um, and... And it's, a, and it's a branding sort of exercise uh, and, a, and a regeneration exercise that's really being led by businesses and local government, perhaps uh, like the Environment City uh, project was um, in, in the 1990s. So um, to finish off, that, I mean, that was going to be my, my sort of finishing point, really, um, thinking about how, how there has been this sort of transition uh, in, in the identity of, of, of the city, uh, and who is who is leading that that, that that transition, and how that's quite a sort of a, a top-down and, and business and, and, and politician-led um, rebranding of, of, of the city, and perhaps not something that that comes up from below. Uh, but there were a couple of couple of events um, over the summer that um, that I sort of wanted to bring in. Um, first of those being, uh, I mean mentioned earlier about, about Leicester's multicultural identity and that being something that, that, that really is quite um, bottom-up, um, really. Um, and uh, Channel 4 um, came, to, came, came to Leicester um, in the summer um, to, to, to the Narva Road uh, in, in, in the southwest of the city, um, where uh, people of the city, uh, people particularly of, of Narva Road, originate from 35 different countries, from India and Pakistan, Poland, Cameroon, and Zimbabwe. Um, and they produced a, a video which um, uh, is online. Um, and for the, for the last week of, uh, of July, 21 of, of Narva Road's locals uh, took over uh, the airwaves of, of Channel 4, introducing uh, peak time shows. Um, and uh, Dan Brook, uh, Channel 4's Chief Marketing and Communications Officer, 
um, said, when you have a public service remit to champion diversity and alternative voices, what better place to find them on Britain's most diverse street? All this week, the residents and shopkeepers of Narborough Road, Leicester, will be introducing programmes on Channel 4 and in the process, reminding us what a stunningly diverse country we all live in. Uh, so so Narborough Road being, being presented uh, in, in, in quite a sort of a formalised way, uh, building on, uh, on, on, on decades of, um, of, of, um, of, of presentation of the city by its people uh, as this proxy for, uh, for, for, for multicultural modern Britain. Uh, and also, um, back to the eco house, um, boarded up and, and, and a bit of a sorry state, um, but the City Council um, have put that set site up for sale, um, inviting bidders, and, 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 and three have been received, um, with, with, with the proviso that, that whoever um, develops uh, the site uh, should do so in an environmentally uh, sustainable way, and that could include refurbishing the eco house or replacing it with a new, even more environmentally friendly building. Um, with, with proposals having been received from uh, a developer who wants to build uh, a quote avant garde eco village, uh, and also uh, this group of people on, on the right hand side who are uh, looking at developing a, a cycle hub and green arts space. Um, so it's, it's, it's very much a, a story that's still still running and, and perhaps one that that might see the environment city sort of come up from from a, from, from, from being a, a community led uh, project um, again that's it for me thank you <laughs>